for entire societies so that people will in fact have their liberties taken away from them but will rather enjoy it because it will be distracted from any desire to rebel by propaganda or brainwashing. It says, or brainwashing enhanced by pharmacological methods. And this seems to be the final revolution. So they called it the final revolution. All the other revolutions had been won. And there have been many revolutions. Some bloodless. Mainly through cultural changes and so on. Other ones were, were very bloody indeed. But the final one was to control and tame humans altogether. Now you can only do that with predictability of people, of everyone. And we're living through a phase now under the guise of terrorism to have everyone's data collected, and it has been for years actually. All the communications, I've read the reports from mainstream newspapers and even from military sites where they have a, literally a, a sort of clone of you a cyber clone of you in cyberspace in a computer with all your habits they even have your friends that you talk to on your cell phones in the same simulations to see if you are as predictable as they think you are by knowing all your habits and likes, dislikes and so on to have a world peace to have peace in society everyone must be 100% predictable by the authorities this ties in again with the Hidden Persuaders by Vance Packard, who says on page 206, eventually, say by AD 2000, perhaps all this depth manipulation of the psychological variety will seem amusingly old-fashioned, but that by then perhaps the biophysicists will take over with biocontrol, which is in-depth persuasion carried in its ultimate Biocontrol is the new science of controlling mental processes, emotional reactions, and sense perceptions by bioelectrical signals. Bioelectrical signals. Now, this was done in the 50s, this book, and then jump forward to the 70s when Zygmunt Brzezinski brought out his book, The Technotronic, with the, with the, Between Two Ages, with the chapter The Technotronic Era in it, where he said the same thing through technotronics as he called it you could control whole societies to continue with Vance Packard's one it says the National Electronics Conference meeting in Chicago in 1956 had an electrical engineer Curtis R. Schaefer of the Northern Katy Corporation explored the startling possibilities of biocontrol as he envisaged it electronics could take over the control of unruly humans this could save the indoctrinations, or not doctrinators and thought controllers, a lot of fuss and bother. It made it sound relatively simple. Back with more after these messages. Hi folks, I'm Alan Watt, and we're cutting through the matrix. Just before the break reading from Vance Packer's book, Hidden Persuaders, I was mentioning biocontrol. It says, biocontrol is a new science of controlling mental processes, emotional reactions, and sense perceptions by bioelectric signals. The National Electronics Conference meeting in Chicago in 56 had the electrical engineer Curtis R. Schaefer of the Northern Kite Corporation explored the starting possibilities of biocontrol as he envisaged it. Envisaged it the electronics could take over the control of unruly humans. This could save the indoctrinators and thought controllers a lot of fuss and bother. He made it sound relatively simple. This is in the 50s. Planes, missiles, and machine tools are already guided by electronics, and the human brain being essentially a digital computer, digital computer can be too. Already, through biocontrol, scientists have changed people's sense of balance, and they have made animals with full bellies feel hunger, and made them fearful when they have nothing to fear. Time magazine quoted him as explaining, the ultimate achievement of biocontrol may be the control of man himself. The controlled subjects would never be permitted to think as individuals. A few months after birth, a surgeon would equip each child with a socket mounted under the scalp, and electrodes reaching 
selected areas of brain tissue, the child's sensory perceptions and muscular activity could be either modified or completely controlled by bioelectric signals radiating, radiating from state-controlled state-controlled transmitters. It's like the Matrix movie, isn't it? This in the 50s. He added the reassuring thought that the electrodes cause no discomfort. This won't know that you are you. I'm sure that the psycho-persuaders of today would be appalled at the prospect of such indignity being committed on man. They're mostly decent, likable people, products of a relentless progressive era. Most of them would want to control us just a little bit in order to sell us some product we may find useful or disseminate with us a viewpoint that may be entirely worthy. But when you are manipulating, where do you stop? Who's to fix the point at which the manipulative attempts become socially undesirable? And that is the big problem, isn't it? That is the big problem. After 9-11, when they asked everyone to give up their, their security for peace, it came once again to the table, how much freedom do you give the average person and still have safety for the state, for the system itself? That will always come up. Well, the answer is, they can't trust man at all. When you read their other writings, they cannot trust man whatsoever. They make it quite categorically clear that they don't trust the average human being. or too primitive, too unreasoning, unthinking. And we live on emotion rather than logic or reason. When people have studied all of the TV, and TV definitely was a great tool, still is a fantastic tool, to manipulate people with, but they also do studies on people who watch television. They have all along. And they were, they were fascinated by those that love soaps. Soaps are full of what Freud would call the sexual, the hidden uh, dogmas of sex, all the, the different frustrations and so on that are under the surface. So they let it go in the soaps. You play out the fantasy in the soap. But they wanted also to see if they could actually make people actually portray it in real life and there was copy of what they were seeing and bring it into their own existences and had questionnaires about this too to see how it was affecting them so we are affected by what we see as Skinner said if you want to modify behavior you alter the environment of your target you put in a television set that's what you do you alter an environment they'll alter their behavior you can do it with a radio as Tavistock found out very early on too when they, they used to try the serials, the continuous serials, where at the end of each hour, the person was left on a, with a cliffhanger, and you weren't sure if they were going to come through this or they'd die, and people literally would run home to hear the next episode. So their behavior was modified. They changed their daily behavior. Very simple stuff in that respect. The Hidden Persuaders goes on in the core and feeding of positive thinkers, or the care and feeding of positive thinkers. On page 194, it is winning the public's collective mind over confidence is a monumental task. Over two confidence is a monumental task, yet industry leaders seem to be succeeding. That was in Tide magazine. Back in the 1920s, Americans across the land were chanting or chatting Ten times, or chanting, yeah, they were chanting, not chatting. Ten times a day, the light is bad in here. It says here, every day and every way I'm getting better and better. Remember the old saying? They're applying to their problems the formula for self-mastery through conscious auto-suggestion devised by French druggist psychologist Emile Cuet. Gradually, this formula became pretty well discredited as a way of coping with their basic problems. By 1956, Cueism seem to be enjoying a hearty revival, particularly in the highest circles of business and government. In almost every day's newspaper, some tycoon was announcing vast expansion plans or unlimited faith in the culture or the future. Economists in the employment of industry were making reassuring pronouncements that our economy was rock solid despite the monumentous growth of unpaid consumer debts. Business Week in March 56 was exulting over the fact that Confidence is high. 
a new wave of confidence is sweeping the business community. A week later, another journal widely read by businessmen was exclaiming happily over the fact that all the important 